Can I sing? The, the tide is high, but I'm moving on. I want to be your number. It's Debbie Harry. Is that her name? I don't know. Blondie. Do you remember? Number one, number one. The tide is high. It, it's going to be a new moon. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, Debbie Harry, like uh, Blondie, like you're not 60 years old. You don't know who she is. It's okay. We'll come back to that in a minute. Here's a question I get asked a lot about the tide. Those people ask me, when is the best tide to fish? Is it better to, to fish the high tide, the low tide, the rising tide, the falling tide? And there is a canned answer, a canned response that I hear a lot, and that is you should fish two hours before high tide and then two hours after high tide. And there might be some truth to that, but I think it's more important how you fish the tide than which tide you fish. Does that make any sense? Come on, let's go find out. <laughs> Debbie Harry from Blondie. No? So Wendy, <laughs> calm down, I'm trying to do a video. <laughs> when when I first started fishing saltwater, um, to be honest, I didn't think much about the tides at all. I didn't I just didn't I just went fishing and, and I fished the same way. It didn't matter if the tide was rising, if it was falling, if it was a slack tide, it did not matter to me. Um, now I know a little bit, a little better. <laughs> and I can share with you, I can share with you how I changed my fishing tactics. Um, basically the best to, to optimize, to best optimize um, wh whatever tide we're having. So if we're having a, a high tide, I might fish one way or a low tide, we're gonna, we're gonna do another. And I, that's what we're really gonna talk about in this video. But before we do all that, I just wanna talk about what the tide is and how the tide works. All right, so I'm probably, probably not telling you anything you don't know. The moon is a satellite of the Earth. It's up there in the sky, and um, it's going around the Earth, and, and it's on one side of the Earth sometimes, and it's on the other side of the Earth at other times. And the moon has gravitational pull. So when the moon is on one side of the Earth, all the water on Earth gets pulled towards the moon, and that causes a high tide on that side. And then when the moon moves over to the other side of the Earth, all the water gets pulled back away onto the other side, causing a high tide on that side. And that's basically how the tides work. <laughs> Here on the East Coast, we have a tide change like every, well, like two times a day, uh, two lows and two high tides a day, approximately. What it does is it changes, the tide changes every six hours and 20 minutes. So let me explain this and in, in, I'll put it into action here. At, let's say at noon today, at 12 o'clock, it was low tide. It was low tide at noon today. At six o'clock, 6.20 tonight, it'll be high tide. It's six hours and 20 minutes later, right? Then the tide will change and it'll start falling again. And six hours and 20 minutes later, so at 12.40 tonight, tomorrow, a.m., it'll be uh, low tide again. And then six hours, 20 minutes after that, high tide again. So it just keeps going back and forth. Every six hours and 20 minutes, a low tide, and then six hours and 20 minutes, a high tide. It just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. So, so that's pretty simple. Uh, but there's one more little caveat to it. Now, I did say the, the tide is caused by the pull of the gravitational pull of the moon, but it's not just the gravitational pull of the moon, it's also the gravitational pull of the sun. So uh, there's two factors that are involved in this. Now you might think to yourself, well, uh, if the tide is, let's say it was a low tide and then six hours, 20 minutes later, it's a high tide and the difference was five feet, it should always be five feet, right? Because the moon's over there and it raises five feet and then it goes over here and it lowers five feet. And you think every day it's just gonna be five feet difference, but it's not because as I just mentioned, the sun is involved as well. Now, sometimes the moon and the sun and the earth line up. And when this happens, and usually when it's a new moon or a full moon, when that happens, the sun also is pulling on the earth and the moon is pulling on the earth. So you get larger tides. So it might be a five foot tide or a really high tide today because it's a new moon or a full moon. But other times during the cycle of the moon, the moon, uh, well, maybe a quarter moon, um, the, the sun will be in one spot, but the moon will be in another. They're not in a line. So you don't have that same amount of gravitational pull with the sun in getting involved in it. You just have that moon pull. So maybe the difference between high tide and low tide is only three feet. And this changes pretty much daily with every tide. Sometimes it'll be a three foot, three and a half foot difference. Sometimes it'll be a four foot difference. I've seen it up to six feet, six and a half foot difference when you have a new moon. That's called a spring tide. 
and that's when it's a new moon or a full moon. And a lot of people like to fish during the springtime and uh, when it's a new moon or a full moon. They'll say the fishing is better. And that might be because there's more movement. But what I want to talk about in this video is, is not so much when's the best time to fish, but how do you fish no matter which tide you're fishing? How do you change your tactics to fish for a falling tide or a rising tide or a high tide or well, any tide? <laughs> Let's take a look. Now one of the keys to fishing, no matter what the tide is, is to use the freshest bait. So I will go to Clem's, as I am here, and I will pick up some fresh shrimp. <laughs> Not only can you get a fresh shrimp at Clem's, but they always have some live bait in here. Some some crabs right here, which will probably catch some drum on those, and, and some mud minnows. So, I mean, those are live. You can't get much more fresh than that. But I do like to pick up fresh shrimp. You can use frozen shrimp, and if the fish are hungry enough, they'll, they'll eat it. I like key lime pie. Oh, I'm getting distracted. Focus, people. Okay, I like the fresh shrimp, and I think the fish like the fresh shrimp better, because if they had a choice between, hey, can I have a frozen shrimp or can I have a fresh shrimp, they're going to they're gonna want the fresh shrimp. So they got them sitting there just ask for like a pound throw them in a bag take them down to the beach cut them up nice and little small little pieces and you just start fishing and they're going to work great what we're looking at right now is about an hour before low tide lots of sand and basically i've got two lines out i've got a large bluefish rig with some finger mullet on it but I'm not concentrating on that, and I'll tell you why. Because the tide's going out, and the pelagics are going out further. They don't want to get stuck in the sand. They don't want to get up here on the beach. So they're going to be harder to fish for. I'd have to cast real far to get one of those. So I'm concentrating on my other reel, which has just got a double drop rig, some fish gum, some shrimp. I'm going to be going for whiting. We got something on right now. Let's find out what it is, shall we? Looks like a croaker. So not only was I right about it being a croaker, but I was doubly right, doubled up to croaker. <laughs> a lot of times people will ask me, how can you tell the difference between a croaker and a whiting? And I'm going to give you a couple examples as I get this guy off the hook here. All right, number one, the gill plate on a croaker on the bottom is actually kind of sharp and hard. And you're not going to have that on a whiting. It's going to be sharp and hard. The dorsal fin sticking up there uh, is really large. And you can see they're actually pretty skinny. There's not a whole lot of meat to them. So that's why this croaker is going back. Some people do like to eat them. They're not for me. I find them all head, not a lot of body, even on the bigger ones. So here is a whiting. I'm going to pull this one up. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that the dorsal fin doesn't really stick up. I mean, there is one, but it's not predominant. Um, they're not all head. They can be a little fatter, even the smaller ones. Um, and they're slippery as all get out. <laughs> now this one looks like he got bit by maybe a bluefish on the way in or something. Something got him in the back. And I would show you there's a little barb under the chin. And I would show you that. But again, as I said, they're slippery. <laughs> so that's my catch and release. Now, if it were high tide, this is how I would fish. I would fish close to the beach. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But I just want to show you the difference between that and the way I am fishing now. Since it's low tide, uh, the water can be a lot flatter. And sometimes you have to cast out a little bit further to find the the bar so I will cast out a little bit further the fish are going to be further back than they are this still might be pumping on the wash when we get into July and stuff like that but I'm going to cast out a little bit further during low tide now since that first whiting got away so quickly I want to pull up another one to show you the difference you see a little barb under his chin uh, it's hard to see with a hook in his mouth there I'll show it to you in a minute but that's definitely one way you can tell the difference it's like he's got a little beard um, their gill plates are not as sharp not a big deal the, the dorsal fin doesn't stick up as much and here you can see I'm gonna turn them over right now and you can see the little the little chin hair if you will, a little whisper all right this is gonna sound ridiculous but every time I cast to the left that way I catch a croaker and every time I cast to the right I've caught a whiting but my other line is to the right so I'm actually gonna pick up my rod and move it to the other side of that rod in hopes that I will catch whiting and not croaker crazy let's find out 
Now regardless if it's high tide or low tide, I'll usually put my sand spike in right where the water's edge is. And you see how I was kind of doing little circles with it? If you put it right in here where the water comes up and the sand's wet and you do little circles like that, it'll go right in. You don't need to bring a hammer and mallet it down. It'll just go right in like that. So that's usually what I'll do. Now I was totally wrong about my move. I doubled up on the whiting side with two croakers. So I was like, all right, I need to bring out the big guns. I guess stop fooling around. So I got out the Yabby pump. That's right. It's low tide so I can get yabbies. It's the only time you can get yabbies. You look for the hole, you, 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 you pump it up, and you get these little ghost shrimp that come up right here, and they make great bait. And I'll tell you something, you can be fishing with shrimp, and you might catch a couple here and there. As soon as you throw out a yabby, you're going to get a hit. Now, I'm not always going to promise you you're going to get a fish on one, but you're always going to get a hit. They just love them. They need to make ghost shrimp flavored, like, fish gum. There's an idea for you. And as soon as I casted out my yabby, I did get a hit. Now, look, I wasn't even paying attention. I just put the rod holder down and boom <laughs> that's how quick it is with these ghost shrimp and i can tell this is a nice fish the dog even thinks it's a nice fish <laughs> everyone's excited to see the nice fish i'm going to pull up so i'm thinking i'm maybe i got myself a nice little whiting here and when i get it up on the beach i'm not disappointed now here's the thing I entered a contest, a tournament, if you will, at Mad Kings, which is a new um, <clears throat> tackle shop over by the new Lowe's. And I thought that the four, one of the four fish species that you had to bring in was a whiting. Now, the reason is because... When I was in the Carolina tournament, if you watch the other video, whiting was one of the fish, but turns out it's not for Mad Kings. So I brought in this whiting and they're like, no, the four fish are black drum, red drum, sheephead and trout <laughs> i was like oh man i thought it was whiting i gotta go catch a trout i suck at catching trout i don't know how i'm gonna do that but i was like i thought i'd bring him in i'd get up on the leaderboard so they weighed him for me anyway and he wasn't even a, a pound and a half so i didn't even get a citation on him i thought i was gonna get on the leaderboard <laughs> oh well <laughs> So no whiting, no citation. Uh, we're going to have to get out there, catch a different species, and bring them back in a little bit and see what we can do with some of the other fish in that, in that category. Now, one of the things I tell people at, at, when they take my class at the rec center is that the best thing you can do at low tide is get out and walk the beach. And the reason I say that is you can see what the land looks like uh, what it's going to look like when the water covers it. So you can see at low tide the structure that's there. You can see these holes and these ditches and look at this one right here. I found this hole and I just thought to myself this is a place I want to come back and fish at high tide because it's a beautiful little hole. There's a bunch of little ruts that kind of go out to it and what happens is the little bait fish will go into that structure. The big fish will come in into that structure looking for the little bait fish or the little whatever gets trapped up in there, crustaceans and stuff. So that's got to be an excellent spot to fish. So get out at low tide, take a walk, you'll find the hole. And what I'll do is I'll find the hole and then I'll mark it. I'll like walk up towards the dune as I'm doing right here. And I will see what house it is there, what house is in front of. And this was a house right there on 19th street. And there was a gazebo. And I was like, I'm going to fish right in front of this gazebo because that's where this hole is at low tide. So when I come back at high tide, I'm going to fish right there at that spot. And that's what I decided to do. So I called in the big guns. I called in my friend Tracy from Faith Surf Fishing. Now, I teach classes at the rec center. He teaches them in person. You can take a, um, a sign up for him. Uh, and he'll take you out on the beach, get you hooked up with a rod and reel, and you'll catch fish um, in live. No, no in class like I do at the rec center, but actually in person on the beach. He'll take out small groups. So you might want to hook up with him if you're interested in learning more or you're just getting started. It's a great way to go. Um, since it was high tide at this time, I was like, let's go for some bigger fish. Let's go for some of the pelagics. So I put a nice piece of finger mullet on, and as soon as I cast it out, it got ripped to shreds. <laughs> so I decided maybe they're little or bluefish. Let me put on some of the finger mullet on my double drop and see if I'll catch any like that. And that definitely was the trick. So here we go. My first blue. Sometimes people ask me, do you like to eat blues? And the answer is yes, I do when they're, when they're bigger than, than eight inches, as this one seems to be. Um, I do like to eat them, but I will bleed them. I will take a knife and I will cut their gills and let them bleed out that day. And I will eat them that night. I won't keep them overnight. I will eat them fresh. Otherwise, they get mealy. I also will smoke them. I like to smoke them. I have a smoker. Actually, I'll put a video up above, a link to the video above, and you can check out my fish smoking uh, video if you're interested in doing something like that. I make really good fish dip. And bluefish is kind of oily fish so it works out really well for that. Now here's another one, and he's also kind of small. I was kind of disappointed in the spot because I walked it at low tide, found this great hole, and then all we were catching were these like little bluefish and nothing too 
Nothing too exciting, except for dun 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 dun. Tracy did manage to get a shark, and this just proves you can be, you can find the best structure, you can do everything right, and you can be participating. It doesn't mean the fish are always going to be participating, so keep that in mind when you get out there fishing. Now I had to get out and catch another fish so I could take it to Mad Kings and get it weighed in, since they would not take my whiting. What's wrong with whiting? People love whiting. So black drum was one of the targeted species, and I happened to land this guy right here, and I was rather happy about it because uh, he, he he's what I thought was a great little uh, black drum for me. I mean, not the biggest black drum I've caught, but, a, but one of the bigger ones I've caught. Um, and so I was like, I'm taking him in, and I'm getting him weighed. So he's going into the cooler. And uh, I'm going to see now, I got to catch a red drum, I got to catch a trout and a sheephead. And what did I catch? I caught I caught his brother. I caught right after that, I caught another um, black drum. So that, that didn't really help out at all. <laughs> so um, I, since I kept the other one and I knew it was going to weigh him and I was going to have to eat him, I decided to let this one go because he seemed to be just a little bit smaller. So I let him go. And then I, I was like, well, what can I fish with maybe to catch something, you know, do something a little different than shrimp and the finger mullet so i found some mud minnows and i'm like all right i'm gonna hook them and i hook sometimes i hook them in the lip sometimes i hook them in the tail so i did one each here and i'm like i'll cast that out and see if i can get a drum with that rice red drum but no of course i got the extinct flounder i caught <laughs> extinct you can only fish for these in south carolina or <laughs> two weeks out of the year so even though i caught this beautiful little flounder that are extinct i had to uh, release him back into the water he was not on the list so I put the black drum in the cooler, took him over to Mad Kings. I'm like, it's going to work out this time, right, guys? Go in the door. I'm all proud of myself. I got this nice big drum. I'm going to be up on the leaderboard, probably going to be in first place, right? Getting the trophy, no doubt. And uh, <laughs> and they get out the scale for me, and they're like, all right, yeah, black drum is one of the targeted species. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and for that embarrassing moment last time with my whiting, uh, I got the right fish this time. And I bring him out, and I'm like, let's put him on the scale and see how much he weighs. So I put him on the scale, and they're like, he's a f about four and a half pounds. He was 4.4 .4 pounds. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's a monster, four point four and a half pounds. And he's like, yeah, it's nice, but uh, the biggest one on the leaderboard is 15 pounds. I was like, 15 pounds? How do you catch a 15-pound black drum? How am I going to win that contest? So I'm like, if I need to catch fish that big, i got to pull out the big guns. So I met up with Anthony. <laughs> I met up with Anthony. Now, Anthony goes for really big fish. Look at the size of this reel. Uh, and rod for that matter and line for that matter and he uses fish i was talking to tracy about this the the bait he uses is bigger than most of the fish we would keep <laughs> so he's got half a, a bonita or bonito bonita uh there a false albi and he's going to use that. He's just going to put that on the hook. That's his bait. And uh, here is a, a piece of um, stingray, like a half a piece of stingray. Look at the size of that hook in that. And he's obviously going for sharks. So he's a shark fisherman. And what he does is he, he sets up the he sets up the reel there. And if you look in the background, even though they got some water on the camera, but he's got his kayak. See that little orange dot and the blue dot? He's taking his kayak and he just kayaks out the bait. So he goes out. He does it by strokes. How many strokes he, he does? He told me like he'll do this many strokes to get out there. But um, I, I'm just like I don't know, 100 yards, 150 yards. I guess he gets out 150 yards, and then he just paddles back, and then he waits for the shark. Now we didn't get one that day, but I'm gonna go out with him again <laughs> in the summer. And I, I, so future videos, Anthony and I are gonna get out there and catch a shark. All this fishing has made me hungry, and there is a bagel dock, brand new, next to the Lowe's, where the Mad Kings is, and I happen to love bagels. So I went over there one afternoon, and they were closed. They closed at like 3 o'clock, so you got to get there a little bit early, so I decided to go in the morning. So I went there in the morning, because you like to eat bagels in the morning anyway, right? And I was just like, oh man, look at all these different cream cheeses. They got veggie, they got lox. My favorite, jalapeno, and that's what I'm going to get, jalapeno cream cheese. And then all the bagels, of course. You got your plain, but who would ever want a plain bagel when you can have, oh, I didn't see that, jalapeno and cheddar. I'm going to go with the salt bagel. Yes, a salt bagel with jalapeno cream cheese. Sounds disgusting. It is more delicioso. So, oh, and you can add a tip right there. So I just said, all right, I'll give him a tip. <laughs> going to get a bagel. Salt bagel, jalapeno cream cheese. So here's a little trivia you might not know. I, I know how to bake bagels. I, I used to be a bagel baker. It's true. I was. I was a bagel baker in New York. I worked in a couple of different bagel stores, and I actually met my wife in a bagel store. We worked in the bagel store together. So I know how to bake bagels, and I know how to eat bagels. So I highly recommend go over to the bagel doc, get yourself a bagel, get a whole bag of bagels, and get like a tub of cream cheese, and just go home and, and have at it. They're really good.
<laughs> All right, part two. So what we got here is some shrimp. I'm picking up some shrimp. It's the heads of the shrimp. I'm gonna throw them in the water. Fire them up, fire them up. That's how you do it. So what we got here is a uh, mid-tide coming up, rising tide. We're not at the high tide. Probably not going to make it to the high tide. The high tide is at about 9 o'clock tonight. It's about 5 after 5, 5.30. So we'll sit it out 5.30, 6.30, We will make high tide. But a rising tide. So we're going to change our tactics. What are we going to do? We've got the same rods. And we're going to shoot for some shrimp. I got some shrimp. I got some uh, fish gum for the little stuff. But we're going to be really concentrating on the pelagics. I want to see if I can find some bluefish. Maybe a shark, probably a shark. <laughs> so changing tactics, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at it. When I was fishing before and it was low tide, there was a few things I mentioned. Number one, I was going for the smaller fish. Number two, I said I was casting out further because the fish were further out there trying to get past that second bar. When the tide comes up, the water rises, the fish don't mind coming in closer and they want to get that bait and stuff that was just on the beach that just got stuck in the wash. So they're coming up closer. You don't have to cast as far and the bigger ones are coming up closer so you can actually target different species. Now I decided I was going to target the bluefish because I mentioned before, I wanted to get a bluefish for the smoker. So I put on a bait and you can see right here, he just avoided my finger mullet entirely, bit everything off and left the head. So I rigged up another one. Uh, I usually just go through the eye and then I'll put it through the body. But uh, he seemed to, another one came and seemed to eat every part except for where the hook was as well. So I rigged up another one. <laughs> I tried to just go a little bit smaller with my finger mold this time. Again, through the eyes, through the body. And again, he missed it. So I was like, I'm going to put a big one on. <laughs> At least I'll see him chewing on it or something like that. So I put a big one on and <laughs> there goes my rod. It actually, I wish I had the video of it. it my rod was in the water. It, this this fish pulled the rod way over. Look at the thing. That's the that's my pen prevail, which is a, re, a pretty stiff rod. And it's been then over fairly good so I was like ah, I got a pretty big fish here now this was a weird fish because what happened was he got out there and you see right there he laid down I was like dragging him in and I'm like ah this is probably a stingray this is probably just a big old stingray and he got that picked up that finger mullet and he ran a little bit like stingray will do and then when he realized I was pulling him in across the bar he's just like nah I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna lay down so I I was talking to some people that were watching me they saw me struggling to get this fish in I was guaranteed that um, they, they were about to see a nice big stingray but to my surprise when it got into the wash I saw its tail and I realized this isn't a stingray at all this is a shark <laughs> it's like well I kind of predicted that ahead of time that I would catch a shark um, they'll come in closer to the beach you know there's sharks are always there when you see people swimming around and they think like there's not sharks under your feet yeah there are they're right there oh here he is finally got him up into the into the surf here and I, I like to get the hook out of a shark and if I, if it's an Atlantic sharp nose I might keep I'll keep like one a year and make some fish shark bites out of them mm, yummy delicious but this is what I think it was a sandbar shark and uh, most of them are either um, most sharks actually are either threatened or endangered for that matter so I like to just get them off the hook as quick as I can get them back in the ocean so get the pliers uh, try to keep him like in the wash so he's kind of staying wet. I don't want to pull him too far up on the beach. Um, not too close because if they're too close to the water and a wave comes up, they, <laughs> they, they start to swim out again. And so once I get him off the hook, I'm just going to drag him by the tail here a little bit and I'm going to get him in the water and I'm just going to swishy-wishy him around. What I want to do is they build up, I think, lactic acid and, and it slows them, it really slows them down and they have a hard time swimming and stuff like that. So I just want to get those waves cr crashing across his gills, getting some oxygen back into him, getting that lactic acid out of his muscles so he'll be strong to swim off and after a little bit uh, he did and so I saw him swim off nice and strong and I felt pretty good about that so having learned my lesson from my previous experience fishing with Tracy, I decided to put just some cut finger mullet on the number one knot hooks on the double drop rig, and that did the trick. So I got my bluefish, here he comes, and uh, he's not ginormous, but at least I finally got one that wasn't a shark. And so, yeah, there you go. How to fish the tides using different tactics. Hope that helped. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I got to put a plug in for Tranquil Harbor and the sands in the surf sauce. I'll tell you why I'm doing it, because 
I want you to enjoy really good hot wings, and these are the best hot wings on the island. And I feel like if people keep going in and requesting them, they're going to make the sands and the surf sauce a permanent fixture on their on their menu, right? So that's what I want to see happen. So I went out and got myself some sands and the surf sauce hot wings, and these are so good. But they are spicy. They are hot. I won't kid you about that. So uh, <laughs> that's why I'm plugging them again. Uh, up here's a link at the at the top here. You can link to see the actual the whole video when I. When I first got the my first taste of the Sands and the Surf hot sauce. All right.